Hey guys, welcome to a what is probably a pretty lively, busy day today. We have a moon in Gemini. When the moon's in Gemini, this is always a busier time of the month. A lot of conversations, a lot of information, a lot of things to do, places to be. It's probably a very busy week generally. The moon in Gemini is also making several aspects today, moving into a conjunction with Mars throughout the course of the day, made a sextile to Jupiter and Aries, and also forms a trine to Venus, who is entering Aquarius today, bringing us some definite vibe shift. So we got a lot to talk about in the energy as it's playing out today, you guys. Let's get into this chart. Let's see how all this energy is coming together for us and what it might mean for us on the ground in our experience today. Welcome back to my channel, you guys. Today is Tuesday, January 3rd, 2023. My name is Aubrey, and this is your astrological outlook of the day. If you guys stick with me till the end of the report, we are also going to be looking at a collective tarot reading for the day because I like to tap the field from more than one modality just so that we can get a more well-rounded overview of whatever's playing out for us on a vibrational level any given day. So we're going to do that as well, but we're going to start with the astrology, and we do have astrology to talk about today. It's likely to be a pretty lively, active day a day where we are having a lot of conversations, got a lot of places to be, things to do, um, things to say and to get off of our chest as well. People are likely to be kind of passionate about the expression of emotions that's going on today. We may see some big overblown displays of emotions. Anger, there could be some anger going on today with the moon in Gemini. So when we, whenever we have a moon going through the sign of Gemini, this is always a more uh, conversational time of month because of course, Gemini ruled by Mercury, this sign is all about communicating and information and learning and talking and doing and being and going places and getting things done and just uh, the interchange and the exchange of things between people generally. So we have a moon which rules our emotions and our feelings transiting through the sign of Gemini, this is when we are like talking about our feelings and it just creates and sparks some busier energy. We got a lot to get done. We got a lot to say about a lot of things. And then when we add the fact that the moon is also coming into a conjunction with Mars today, which is our energy, this is, we're just likely to feel very energized. There's probably feeling pretty good, pretty vital, pretty strong. The moon in Gemini is also going to be forming a sextile to um, Jupiter as we open the day. And so this is expanding that energy, right? Jupiter is a planet of expansion and supersizes things. And the sextile, this is like an assisting aspect where the energy is kind of playing together. And so we do have this uh, Gemini moon coming in the conjunction with Mars, having us feeling pretty fired up about things or pretty passionate about things, but then it's being expanded by this Jupiter influence when Mars is also the ru ruling the position of Jupiter right now. So whatever's going on with Jupiter and the moon impacting Jupiter today is playing right into that Mars energy as well. So we do want to be careful about sort of maybe like picking fights today or finding ourselves in unnecessary disputes. However, with the Jupiter influence, even though it's in the sign of Aries, like this does ex um, expand and increase the potential for like anger and aggression and stuff like that. But you know, it also, Jupiter is like this jovial planet and it's about like optimism and hope and trust and faith and belief. Like it's the great benefic. It brings like gifts and blessings. So, you know, it does expand things. And if we are in a place of, you know, internalized anger, probably over some type of ego issue actually that we're projecting outwards or some type of internalized frustration as well, uh, this could definitely manifest in an expanded sense of passion being expressed that way as well. But generally, I feel like people are just going to be feeling a need to like say what's on their heart and speak their mind and speak their truth as well. There's so much energy right now that is pushing us to really speak, align with, and begin to embody a sense of very personalized truth with Jupiter in the sign of Aries as well. And the other thing that we have going on today, you guys, is Venus ruling our wants and our preferences and our desires, relationships, love, money, value, moving in a sign of Aquarius. We are going to have a greater appreciation and value for authenticity over this next couple of weeks. And Venus moving into the sign of Aquarius also is going to, for the next several days, put her into a uh, sextile with Jupiter and Aries that we just got done talking about. And today, actually, the moon in Gemini, which is another air sign, is going to be forming a trine to Venus as she moves into Aquarius. So we've actually got Venus... Um, 
Mars and Jupiter all in this interplay today as a result of the moon aspecting all of them. The moon in Gemini is first forming a trine to Venus, a sextile to Jupiter, and then we'll be building to conjunction with Mars throughout the course of the day. So relationships could be a focus. Venus and Aquarius though, this, like I said, this is a, an appreciation and a value and a desire for authenticity, for truth, for uniqueness, and for the freedom to be able to express that and to align with that. When we have Venus transiting the sign of Aquarius. This is um, an energy that really requires like a mental, it, it wants mental connection and intellectual stimulation and sort of like a meeting of the minds. Uh, Aquarius is a very, it sounds like a water sign, but it's a very strong air sign. It's fixed air. And Venus in the sign of Aquarius, like this is the mental stimulation and the mental connection and wanting to relate to people based on um, unique characteristics on that mentalized level. Like this is people being drawn together based on their quirks, you know what I mean? Or based on their little eccentricities or their uniquenesses and coming together in that way and just sort of having this like electric connection or just this more like telepathic fusion of energy that is very appealing to the Venus and Aquarius vibe. This is also um, a detached type of a heart-based energy, which is interesting at this period of time where we are, you know, really sort of moving on from a lot of things from the past and beginning to move towards a period where we're really going to begin uh, embodying the um, sense of authenticity that we have discovered about ourselves over this past couple of years and all of these changes that have gone on and will become a much like more essential part of our character and our experience and our personalized expression moving forward over this next several years now that we are at the brink of having Pluto enter the sign of Aquarius as well. The expression of like our own individuality and our own uniqueness is what is going to give us our self, sense of self-empowerment over this next 20 years or so while we have um, Pluto transiting the sign of Aquarius. And that is, that's coming this spring, you guys. But with Venus entering the sign of Aquarius right now and making the aspect to Jupiter, that's really what is making the Venus Aquarius vibe pack sort of a bigger punch this year as Venus moving into the sign of Aquarius is going to put her into the sextile with Jupiter, which Jupiter and Aries already wants to like like sort of forge ahead and go in a new direction and be independent and like and take a risk you know jump off the cliff and spread our wings and see if we can fly and just it, it instills this greater sense of faith and trust and belief and hope in ourselves and a, a desire to embody a personal truth right and then we've got venus now coming and which is our heart and our like i said what we what we want what we desire and our values what we value coming into the sign of aquarius and forming the sextile to jupiter in the sign of aries and so on this heart based level now as well we're also desiring a greater alignment and the liberation to align with our own authentic truth so this is going to be an expanded sense of people wanting to detach from that which is mundane or uninteresting or not mentally stimulating and instead like choose to try something new, something unique, something different that resonates with this um, authentic aspect of ourselves that we're feeling more drawn to and uh, developing a greater relationship to at this point in time as well. So this is definitely people making changes. Aquarius is also a sign of drastic and dynamic change, making big changes in the context of relationships in order to achieve that freedom to follow that personal truth and feel more supported in that process, I guess, um, as we go through this period of time. So very interesting sort of how these planets are playing out in the context of where we're moving throughout the course of this year. If you guys missed my video, the 2023 video I did the last video I did for the first of January, the month of January, and the like overview for 2023. You might want to watch that one as well because it will give you some context to understand um, these daily videos as we are moving throughout the course of this year, narrat narrating the shift of the ages and how these pieces are sort of falling into place. And it's starting, you know, with this Venus having also just come out this conjunction with Pluto as well. Like this is very intense and like 
powerful and transformative interactions and encounters and, you know, revelations in the context of relationships and how we relate to our own selves and our own sense of value and what we will and will not surrender power to and, you know, rediscovering a profound sense of inner worth that leads to the sense of self-empowerment as well. That is energy that was present and that was indicated for January 1st and to be unfolding throughout the course of this year. So, you know, with Venus moving into the Aquarius in the sextile with Jupiter, this I do feel like is giving us an ability to maybe start to detach from, liberate ourselves from uh, things that we've been bound to, relationship dynamics specifically that we have been bound to that have been preventing us from moving towards our next phase of growth in alignment with authentic truth and towards this process of self-actualization and activating our destiny, which is the galactic push right now as we are transitioning ages into the age of Aquarius. So um, we've got all of that going on and the vibe should begin to shift. Uh, people are likely to sort of come out of hermit mode as well. Venus in Capricorn is a much more like a desire to isolate, to sort of not be as communicative and stuff like that. But now again, Venus moving to the sign of Aquarius. Aquarius also isn't necessarily like an extroverted energy, but it's seeking out like minds and bonding on like a heart based level through these intellectual similarities. So there is definitely this interpersonal connection dynamic that really is a major part of the Aquarius energy. But um, it's it's more like picky and choosy, you know, it's not like the Libra energy or the Gemini energy that just will, wants to go out there and talk to anybody. It's much more particular about, you know, the vibration that it chooses to interact with because it is seeking this uh, like meeting of the minds and this mental stimulation that then trickles down to like this emotional connection. And so it's more like it needs more of like the niche vibration that aligns with it in order to feel that and so that's really sort of more what it seeks after it's like smaller groups who have who, who have like a lot in common and a lot that joins them together as opposed to like larger groups of acquaintances and stuff like that so that's the vibe you guys going throughout this next couple of weeks starting today and also you know that we have this gemini moon this is just a busy busy energy aquarius and gemini in combination together venus and aquarius the moon in gemini and coming in the conjunctions of mars like i said this is big energy uh lots of passion lots of expression but probably like along the lines of things that we're just like very uniquely interested in so we're talking about our feelings in some big ways again relationships our themes today or what we truly or authentically want or desire our passions with mercury also though mercury ruling the position of mars currently where the moon is coming into the conjunction with mars retrograde in the sign of capricorn our plans our goals what we're working on what we're redoing this could also be like a really strong topic of conversation people talking about like what they've been working on what they've been fixing up what they've been doing to to change something or to fix something or um, what their plans are going forward as well. People could definitely be talking about the plans that they're making. Also, energy could very well today be bringing in big ideas or solutions in regards to choices or decisions that we need to make or in regards to relationships or finances or in regards to things from the past as well. We've got lots of retrograde energy going on right now. So um, there definitely could be like elements of the past and things that we missed or that, you know, us getting the whole picture or getting the whole story or gaining a crucial piece of information in some way that helps us to make a decision or helps us to make a choice or helps us to move forward or, you know, inspires us or fires us up or makes us feel passionate to do something or to say something or to take some action in some type of a way or to express ourselves in some type of a way with this Jupiter, Gemini, Mars, Aries, Aquarius, Venus influence going on. Liberating ourselves from obsessions or addictions is also something that could come through this. You know, this Venus Pluto energy that we've been coming out of, this has a tendency to create like and Mercury was there as well. Like we like obsessive thoughts or feelings or desires, like a sense of it, it stems from like this internalized sense of like emptiness or lack that we are like not conscious of. And therefore, you know, we feel a need to sort of like exert a level of control or we're just, you know, cycling around and around about something and it, it um 
it can really like trigger some of like our deeper wounds and stuff like that, especially relationally and in terms of like relationships and like the heart and stuff that we've experienced. And again, Venus rules value. So it can kind of sort of like distort or darken our sense or perception of our own value, which a lot of times can externalize as com obsessive thinking or finding ourselves caught in like, obs like, uh, um, like just obsessive feelings or obsessing about a person or a situation. Uh, but Venus in Pluto also exposes the truth about things in the realms of relationships and in the realms of finances. It brings out dark secrets. It brings out things that have been hidden under the surface or withheld. And it's just a very intense energy. It can bring up power struggles as well. And it can, it definitely rules like addictions because, you know, in, in trying to like, it, it, externally trying to seek pleasure in order to fill a void internally that a lot of times like I said we're not even conscious is necessarily there as a result of some type of like deeply rooted trauma or something like that so we had that going on for our new year and this is the energy that we're sort of coming out of now but it's really beautiful how we're transitioning out of this energy because we are stepping out of that more intense heart-based energy into this energy of expanded ability, an expanded ability to detach and to liberate ourselves. So, you know, some things may have been coming up that were weighing pretty heavy on our heart, or, you know, we may have found ourselves in a, you know, maybe a little bit of a darker place or, you know, just in this very intense, it's also like very, very intense and powerful and transformative encounters and interactions and stuff like that too. But this energy that we're in now is giving us this, like I said, expanded ability to sort of detach and to liberate ourselves from anything that is out of alignment with what makes us feel like we are standing in our truth sort of. So, you know, to the same extent that we may have been struggling with you know some of maybe the darker aspects of ourselves or just some more intense feelings over this past couple of days is the same extent that we're like able to kind of detach and release and move on from these things now in search of that which again is like a better reflection or can meet us on a mentalized level or sort of fills us up on that more intellectual base level so interesting dynamic the way that that is playing out as well and that is basically what we have to say for the astrology today uh again lots going on lots to talk about lots of conversations happening things from the past again definitely being highlighted the sun today is at 14 degrees of capricorn and ancient bass relief carved in granite remains a witness to a long forgotten culture so the position of the sun today is bringing up a reference to um things from the past coming back around and us gaining or maybe learning something about them or seeing them in a new light or just being exposed to a piece of information or a context maybe that we had been missing in the past it's also talking about you know we have mercury at 22 degrees of capricorn today that sabian symbol is a general accepting defeat gracefully and you know while on its surface value this may seem like not that positive of a symbol it is still about moving on from something and it's being done gracefully like something may be coming to an end, like some battles are no longer worth fighting. Sometimes, you know, we need to just like surrender and move on from something. I feel like this is also kind of referencing maybe like things from the past that we're deciding to like withdraw our energy from and no longer continue fighting against as well. And we have Mars today at nine degrees of Gemini. That Sabian symbol is a medieval archer stands with the ease of one wholly sure of himself, bow in hand, a quiver filled with arrows. So this symbol also I feel like is talking about us being ready to sort of take aim at something as well, to go in a new direction, to launch off, to, you know, try to hit some type of target, to move towards our goals, to execute, to make something happen. And, you know, in that process of preparing, like we're preparing, we're pulling back the bow, we've got our eye on the target. It's just a matter of when we're going to release, when we're going to launch. And personally, I think that we should wait until the end of January to make that happen around the new moon but we kind of want to wait for mars and mercury and also perhaps uranus to go direct but when that arrow flies it's gonna fly it's gonna fly fast and hard and it's gonna fly directly at its target bullseye we have coming jupiter in the sign of aries ruling the position of mars the things that we are executing on the choices that we are making the actions that we are taking what we are starting what we are launching off on the new endeavors 
the risks the courage that we're having the courage to take right now these are going to pay off come next summer next fall when jupiter enters the sign of taurus the sign of abundance with jupiter there so and jupiter rules success so there's a positive trajectory for this arrow that we are preparing to launch right now, but we are just still in a process and in a phase of gaining the necessary information in order to like make sure that we know exactly what we're doing and we have everything in place to make the best choices and um, execute on our plans and goals. So that is really uh, what I have to say today in terms of the astrology, you guys. Um, yeah, it should be a pretty good day. Again, like the Mars energy with the moon, we might want to like watch our temper a little bit if you're feeling more like along those lines. But overall, looking pretty exuberant in the field today. Let's talk about the tarot for a minute. We've got a very interesting um, tarot message coming out. It is all about new beginnings in the context of us sort of stopping fighting against ourselves okay um very interesting how this is gonna go first of all it's super interesting because on the back of the deck just to start this reading we have the hermit followed by the eight of pentacles so this is telling me that like all the energy that i'm about to talk about that's being represented in the cards that came out today and then we actually had the wow queen of wands and the king of swords under that so all with this this being our base energy all of the energy that we're about to talk about today is in the context of a process of self-empowerment that has gone on throughout the course of this capricorn cycle where we have been more to ourselves and really sort of working towards and thinking about what our goals are going to be and what we're going to do and what we're going to create this is telling me that you know energy put into being in alignment with the our personal truth and our passions, our creative potential, done in sort of a more isolated and um, internalized way, and you know that we are putting effort and work into these goals and plans that we've been putting effort and work into, coming from a sense of personal truth and personal passion, and maybe we've been doing it sort of in the dark or by ourselves or in a way like not really talking about it or in a way that not a lot of people know about. Well, this is leading to all of these new beginnings that are very supported and it's also having to do with um us coming to a place of ending uh, any type of like mental doubt okay or questioning our ability to create or to have or to do the things that we really want to do and create and have and move towards at this point in time the first two cards that we had coming out were the ace of pentacles followed by the nine of pentacles the next card that we had coming out was the five of swords in reverse after that we had the fool coming out with the emperor and after that, we had the Page of Cups and the Two of Cups coming out. Now, if any of you guys read tarot as well, like this is a very, I feel like this is a very clear and obvious message that this is talking about, especially in the context, like I said, of these four cards that were consecutively on the back of the deck and um, what we've been doing maybe behind the scenes of things or what's been going on behind the scenes of things. But to have the reading, first of all, let's talk about the Five of Swords in reverse because this was the only card that actually came out singularly. All the other cards literally came out together and it's in reverse. And the Five of Swords, this is a sword or this is a card to me of mental conflict and self-sabotage. And as a result of that, you know, facing a lot of enemies and issues in our external world and our external reality as well. With it in reverse, it's reminding me of that degree of Mercury today, the general accepting defeat great gracefully in terms of um, coming to a point where we're ready to sort of lay down the weapons against ourselves and like stop doubting ourselves and stop telling ourselves that we can't do it and stop any cycles or patterns of negative self-talk or um, just like subconscious programming that has uh, kept us from being able to trust ourselves in some type of way. I feel like this is also sort of coming to an end as we are stepping more into this personal truth and into our own creative uh, inspiration and passion. And we are just not fighting against ourselves as much. And this is going to create a lack of resistance in the world around us as well in terms of 
manifesting our desires, which is a major theme of this whole year. This whole 2023 year, I feel like is really in a lot of ways all about um, self-improvement, like personal growth and self-empowerment that comes as a result of that in alignment with this rediscovery of the truth of our value based on our authentic potential that we are seeing within us. And then to start this reading, you know, we with the ace of pentacles coming out, followed by the nine of pentacles. This is the progression from the seed to the full harvest and the full abundance in a very materialized, physical, um, 3D, like, like abundant successful way the nine of pentacles is all about it's just like the self-made woman card this is the person who really like picks themselves up with nothing and creates everything with it and doesn't have to sacrifice or surrender or give up their own power in order to receive something because they have everything they need they need because they've created it for themselves because they recognize the truth of that value and that potential internally and as a reason and they've, they've utilized it right they've learned to utilize it so we've we're taking we're we're at this place where we're recognizing this unlimited potential this ace of pentacles this fruitful plane you know what i mean like this this um fertile soil okay like we're seeing the opportunities we're seeing the potential and this is blossoming like this is talking about you know taking that opportunity taking that potential um and get doing the work right doing the solitary work going into our hermit mode and getting the job done like it is going to create this ultimate success for us so new beginnings in like especially like financial endeavors as well um are looking good. And then the next cards that we had coming out, the Fool and the Emperor. This is also about st the Fool. This is going, this is a new journey, right? This is launching off on a new journey. This is Jupiter in the sign of Aries right now, for sure. This is the confidence in ourselves to take a risk and to try something new. But the, the Emperor also has a plan. The Emperor is also about working hard and getting the job done. And, you know, the Emperor sits on his throne and has all this power, but it's it's a very strategic energy and he, he's gotten there because of the effort and the work essentially that he has put in and his ability therefore to manage and to oversee and to rule okay so you know this is talking about this new journey that we're on as well we have the ace of pentacles here progressing to the nine of pentacles and then we have the fool progressing to the emperor so you know this is a new journey that we are going on right now that is leading to putting us in this place of personalized power to putting us back on our throne we are becoming the self-made woman and we're also becoming the emperor on the throne through this process that we're going on based on like i said this recognition of our personal truth following our person igniting our personal passion and um getting to work but again doing it in a way that is more isolated and internal and not you know, necessarily broadcasting it in the world, like doing our work behind the scenes, very focused. Um, this card, the Hermit, always reminds me a little bit of Saturn as well, you know, self-discipline, self-control, like not being, uh, like not telling everybody necessarily all about it, just getting it done and making it happen. Like this is leading to some very uh, successful results and outcomes. And then also even in the realms of relationships, like so what we're talking about, you know, whether this is, you know, some type of financial endeavor or whether this is some type of just major lifestyle change or whether this is having to do with relationships. We also have then the Page of Cups and the Two of Cups. The Page of Cups, this is an offer. This is some type of love offer, right? And with the Two of Cups, this is a... This is like the soulmate card. This is like a true, genuine, authentic, balanced, harmonized connection. A, a meeting of the minds and the hearts and the souls. This is an equal filling of the cups, right? So even the relationship dynamics and things that are coming into formation right now and that are coming into fruition right now have a potential to lead to these really profound connections, whether it be, again, like a, a, a work connection or a work relationship or just the, the people that we are meeting throughout the course of, you know, circumstances if we're changing things up for ourselves or whether this be more of like a romantic type of situation what we are beginning now 
what we are starting now, the journey that we are going on now, the seeds that we are planting now, the offers that we are accepting now, as long as we're able to get out of our own way to separate ourselves from the more destructive thought patterns and self-sabotaging thought patterns of the past and stand in our power, right? Stand in the power of our personal truth, King of Swords, and our authentic passion and creative potential, Queen of Swords, and really work on that. Like that is what is leading to this revival and to this rebirth, this sense of in this this success for us. We also have judgment under that. So that's what the tarot cards are saying today. And I feel like again, it's sort of reinforcing this energy that we have going on right now, which really is talking about this new phase, going in this new direction, being attracted to what is new and really seeking out this, um, a reflection of that, which is authentic to us at this point in time. Now let's take one more card, synchronicity card, God, spirit, universe. What do we need to know about the, uh, energy today? What advice will benefit us as we go through the day when shooting onto the ground? And it says, God's the boss. So we don't have to worry about anything, you guys. Everything's under control. We just need to sit back and go with the flow and stand in our power. It says, who then is that faithful and wise steward? Luke 12, 42. You must do your job joyously and faithfully in the knowledge that God is your boss. Your subconscious will then respond and promote you and remove obstacles to your success. Have a constructive vision. Be faithful to your vision. Show respect for authority and you will be prospered along all lines so in the context of the astrology we have going on today and also this tarot message that came out i feel like that is some perfect inspiration for us to keep in mind as we are navigating this energy today and this week so that's what i have to say today you guys a message from the stars a message from the cards if you guys like this video please give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel share it with your friends if you think they would be interested in like this type of content too i have a facebook page a facebook group a website and some other socials you guys those are in my description box below if you're into any of that and come back with me tomorrow we will have another day of astrology to talk about in our first week of january as we move towards this full moon coming up which is going to be another big one so we've got energy to talk about i'll be here you should be here too you don't want to miss it and i'll see you then guys have a beautiful tuesday and until tomorrow bye